engage something like the Leona that the Silas could then steal. And so by going for the Rel, I think that it offers RNG more engaged tools while giving Silas a slightly weaker ultimate to be actually steal away. Not to say that Silas can't get any value out of it, but Leona that scales his first ever international competition, playing against the only man ever to win an international competition in two different roles. It is truly a David versus Goliath on the top side of the map. And Fnatic trying to even out the numbers a little bit here. 5v1, <laughs> we'll see if we can take him down. All right, let's see what Fnatic Tech they've come up with. So level ones, for those that don't know, Fnatic is quite famous for coming up with crazy level one tech. Right now, Hillisang, look at Hillisang and Bean. Look at the position they're in. They're trying to leverage the Fog of War. Well, it's all Fog of War, so here we are. Axe comes through. Xiaohu showing respect, not going to get caught out of position. I don't think they even spotted him. And now they should see him. So Fnatic know that Xiaohu know, and Xiaohu knows what Fnatic is up to. Meanwhile, pings are coming down on the bot side, red buff. So what I expect to happen now is the Lee Sin. Oh no, the thing is, you're Lee Sin. Ah, it's awkward. So normally what junglers will often do is they'll go back to base, they'll trade their trinket out for the sweeper, and then they'll immediately use it to sweep out their, their half of the map. But that's not what they're considering right now. Bwipo and Niski are clearly looking for a delayed invade. Look at where Ming is. What is the, yeah, I was just about to say, what is Ming up to here? RNG read what is going on. They expect some sort of sneaky shenanigans. And here, this ward is so big. RNG read the level one. Oh, such intelligent play by RNG. They're just going to wait it, wait it, wait it out. Oracle's popped. And Fnatic do not know. They are unaware. Pepe Laugh, Whipper by himself, left alone by Adam and Niski. Here we go, crying. Flash stun card. Whipper knocked up immediately. Whipper gets the smite, tries to flash away. Ignite is ticking. Zhao who flashes forward. Whipper survives. The red buff secured, though, by way. He's going to look for the spectral more stun. Adam has to flash away. And in the end, even though they didn't get a kill, RNG absolutely dominate that early trade. Such great awareness from RNG. This is going to put way so far ahead, and it's going to put Whippo's jungle clear so far behind. Look at what Wei's doing. Immediately moves into the top side of the map, knowing that Adam doesn't have flash, and this is going to give him the opportunity to split the map as well. This is going to make the 1v1 top side so much harder for Adam and Whippo. Oh no, don't tell me he's pathing towards the top side of his map. Oh, this is going to be devastation for Whippo. He's going to lose his blue buff. He's going to fall even further behind, and what he was doing to Willa is now happening to him. Yeah, Willa backstage is rubbing his hands together gleefully right here. Hang Wei, on. though, does have flash. Gonna get the Spectral more stun here onto Adam. No flashes on Whippo. Adam, there's the flash away from Wei. Niski down towards the bottom side, just getting wailed away on by crying. The flash forward as they look to Jawu. No flash on the cannon either. Wei's trying to get away. Whippo needs the auto attack. Stun's gonna land onto Niski. That's first blood. Wei escapes. Adam and Whippo now level one. Running back to the safety of their tower. Crying locks in the gold card. But RNG will satisfy themselves with a kill with all of Whippo's jungle and with Fnatic basically not having a jungler for the next at least 10 minutes of the game. So Fnatic saw Zhao who isolated and they had an option to just commit onto him and get that kill because Wei was out of the fight. But Bwipo was like, if I get this double buff, it is massive for me. So he over commits and he separates from the rest of his team, creating a two versus two with which RNG are able to turn around in their favor. Beautiful stuff from RNG. They continue to accelerate this early game lead. Charlotte? And they're now in some trouble, though. He'll use by Gala. Hillisang still has the Ignite here. Wave pushing in underneath the tower. Someone is burnt for the RNG bottom lane as the wave does push in. Gala, of course, falling behind in CS early on. Hillisang <laughs> continues to be a nuisance, but Gala didn't have a support for the first couple of waves of the game, so it's no surprise that he is about 7 to 10 CS down. Whipper trying to steal this way. Actually, already level 3 catch up XP is a hell of a drug there for the Lee Sin. As he's uh, been able to get himself some gold. And now Adam, leaving lane once again from the top lane, joins up with Whippo, steals away a little bit of the camp, and uh, helps get his jungler back in the game. This means that Whippo will actually be able to secure both Scuttle Crabs because Hillisang and Bean do have the prio in that lane. So not actually that bad overall for Whippo. If they can secure this blue buff as well, Ooh, but Hillisang has his eyes on Gala. It's an absolute psychopath, is Hillisang. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> diving down the bone skewers. Whippo now can take away this blue. And it's the second time in two days we've seen a Lee Sin basically have nothing in the early game to getting back into the game pretty quickly. And Okay, I'm, but to be fair, Willow was put much further behind <laughs> yesterday. I'm trying to equate the two so that Fnatic feel motivated and come back oh, like, yeah. like oh, I Well, I mean, yesterday. right now, no. they're not in, like, a massive deficit. There's only one kill, the difference right now.
Ooh, nice sidestep there from Ming. Hillisang has landed a lot of hooks. The thing that we didn't talk about, uh, which you, you did briefly mention, was because Ming was up with the team during that whole play, so much was lost for Gala. You can see that a massive CS discrepancy has been built up because he was 1v2 in that lane and didn't have any assistance. Um, and now, because of the play that Buipo has shifted towards the bot side of the map, Adam is forced to go back to base. He recognizes that he's in a very awkward position right now. He is down in experience, down in farm. It's a massive wave he lost out though as well. So, yep, gonna be about half the farm of Xiaohu right now, as you say. We'll be able to catch this underneath the tower in the end. I like the strat of backing, TPing back, knowing that the wave's there, getting a little bit more defensive itemization underneath your belt with that Ruby Crystal. Adam is able to catch this wave. 500 gold between the two teams, or thereabouts, and across the board, slight leads on the bottom side of the map for Fnatic, whereas on the top side of the map, RNG very much in the advantage. So, the thing to take into consideration now over the next few minutes is this wave is stacking for Adam towards Jauhu. Um, Whippo, though, while his camps are actually passed up towards the top side of the map, the thing that I'm curious about is to who's going to hit level 6 first between the two mid laners. There's a world where Fnatic can look to leverage a stacked wave up towards the top side of the map, try to threaten Jauhu and actually kind of use... Um, the level lead that Xiaohu has against him, because you can see Adam just hitting level 5, Niski's going to have the push in mid, there's a window where he can roam, but Buipo instead choosing to path towards bot. Looks like that his eyes are actually on the Drake, trying to leverage the bot push, or he's maybe even threatening a bot dive. There are zero TPs available right now, and I think the bot dive is the play. He's going to try and get out of here, gets caught in the middle of his jump, has to flash. Oh, but Adam is now in trouble. Adam not yet, level 6, doesn't have the Ragnarok, turned up with the Slicing Mash from way on his way as well, Adam. Trying to get out of this, the Undertow. He's going to go back and pick it up. Now takes the flash away. Spectral more. Stun way goes wide. Adam still running for the hills here. Destiny's coming in. A counter Destiny as well. And now Niski's in for a world of hurt. Underneath the tower, Xiaohu goes. And Niski, Destiny is straight to his demise. But such a massive misplay here from Fnatic. Like, everything that we were just talking about, the stacking wave for Adam up towards the top side of the map, the fact that he was going to be forced to overextend in that position, you have to be aware of what RNG can do, because they're going to do it. Yep. This is RNG that we're talking about. The level 6 comes through for Kryon. What does he do? Immediately looks towards the top side of the map, and while he was not necessary, Xiaohu took advantage of the fact that he was level 6, and he ends up punishing Adam in the 1 versus 1. He's now going to secure himself more plates. Now, let's see if Fnatic can get something back on the cross map. Ming actually going for the engage here. Still going to get stunned up. Hillis and Glow Ignite is taking Gala, dives forward, and Ming takes the kill. Whippo here a little bit too late. Dragon's Rage kick available, but he misses the Sonic Wave. Now the TP's come in, and Fnatic are trying to make plays on the map. Whippo will be able to take out one, but Zhao who comes in, in trying to crystal arrow from Bean. There's the kick. Gala down. Bean survives. Zhao down as well. And Bean, the substitute, gets three kills in the early game. What was that? So initially, that play looked like a travesty for Fnatic. The fact that Hillisang lost his life so early in the straight up two versus two, but now this is so good for Fnatic because Jauhu, he's going to lose this wave. He committed his TP top. Adam can get so much back. Uh, as I said, he can get back. No, he's not. He's going to roam mid because that's <laughs> what Adam does. Um, but it was such a great play from Whippo because he held on to the kick in in uh, in the exchange that he can actually knock up Jauhu while also setting up Gala to be killed by Bean. So everything ended up working out nicely, and now Fnatic have equalized the gold. Bean is sitting at 2-0 and 1. Garner is extremely far behind, and even though Xiaohu uh, had a huge advantage top lane, and he's still level 7, of course, uh, and let's have a look back at this. You can see here the level advantage for Xiaohu. If you look at the minimap, you can see that the Silas is primed and ready to TP up towards the top lane, but Kryon is in exactly the same position. And if Adam had something like a Gore Drinker here, yeah, maybe he could turn this one around, but... This is just a huge overcommitment from Niski. He should have recognized that his top laner was dead, and he ended up giving over a kill that he just didn't need to give over. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, uh, Ming has just backed, meaning that the moment they come back in, they're primed and ready to fight. Everything gets burned on the Hillisang, and he can't disengage. And you think, okay, at this point, Bean is dead, especially when Whippo misses his Q, but uh, he ends up getting that initial kill. Bean flashes away. We don't have time because we've got more fight. Hillisang has six here. Death and Below is going to land it. Crying going in with the Destiny as well. Death and Below from Hillisang just to try and get away from this Spectral More Flash. Bean stunned up. Wait, takes out Hillisang and now underneath the tower. That's the shutdown. RNG answer back in the bottom lane. However, Niski's on his way. Whippo there as well. Dragon's Rage Kick about to come off cooldown. There's the stun card. Whippo once again missing the Sonic Waves. Call of the Q not quite hitting yet. Gala dives away with the Killer Instinct and will survive.
Really nice play once again from RNG. They do not slow down. Even though they are typically a topside focused team, the moment Kryon's ultimate is up, they look for a play. While Ming does end up falling, it doesn't matter because they end up getting two in return. Getting that shut down onto Bean as well, kind of hurting his momentum is a really big deal for RNG. And they make sure that they keep the game going their way. Kryon on this twisted fate, one of his best champions, something that he is extremely comfortable on, showcasing what he's capable of and how much impact he can have over the map. Everywhere on the map so far, alongside Wei, that deadly duo for RNG. Hillasang here and Child of Crystal out. Crying, not 100% sold. He had to flash from that one. Bone Skewer goes wide anyway, so doesn't have to uh, really pay for the fact that he flashed a little bit too early there. I think the arrow was going wide. Still respects it ever. The thing about the Ash hitbox is it is, you know, slightly bigger than the arrow. The majority of hitboxes, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so he does showcase that respect. Something we also have to know, Adam. How Jiao, who's like, where's Adam? And Adam's like, I'm right here. <laughs> Adam has a Kindle gem and a Ragnarok to try and take this trade. Jiao, who runs away, doesn't actually really expend too much there. Just the uh, lightning rush, and Guerpo able to take uh, the Rift Held here. So it's, uh, it's a dragon and a Rift Held taken by Guerpo. Niski here on the bottom side, teaming up with Hillasang now to defend this bot lane tier one. <laughs> so they've moved Bean into mid, and they basically said, hey, listen, if all Kryon wants to do is farm and leave, you sit here and farm. We'll keep Niski bot lane, uh, and he'll just stay relatively safe as Hillasang looking for any opportunity to find a pick. Wei, once again, up towards the top side of the map. This man is always proactive. No, the Whippo's here. Xiaohu doesn't have flash, doesn't have a way to get across here. Sonic Wave once again going wide, but Whippo's on his way. There's the Destiny. Whippo underneath the tower, stun carded up. Spectral Maul just short once again. TP's coming in as Niski tries to join this. And once again, it feels like Fnatic are drawing good after bad here. With the TP coming in from Niski, not really much he could do. Exactly that. It's one of those questions where, like, okay, even if Wei didn't know that Lee Sin was there, the reality was that they had the Twisted Fate ult primed and ready to go. And this is the great thing about Kryon. He's always right behind his team whenever there is action about to happen. And this is how he utilizes the Twisted Fate so well. Now this is a two versus three. Magnus Storm coming out this TP as well. A stopwatch from Kryon keeps him alive. And Chada is going to hit onto Xiaohu in the TP. Immediately, Adam just runs in the wrong direction. This is something that has plagued Fnatic over and over in the LEC. Their willingness to take a fight bites them more often than not. They are just... They they keep overforcing these plays. Silas is nowhere near strong enough to try and fight anyone right now. He really needs that Everfrost completed at least. And with Adam so far behind in the 1v1, there's very little. They, they shouldn't be trying to force this, but they are. And like, yes, if Hillasan can get a couple kills, then you can start sharing that gold around and there are ways in which you can get back in. But I felt like Fnatic was in a fine spot. Yeah, it was like 600 gold. The, the gold is relatively even, and instead they kept forcing, and RNG's like, okay, we'll happily take this. They're playing the map so much better. They're utilizing this Twisted Fate extremely well, uh, and they're benefiting off the bat. Uh, ben Travis there with the Adam on Olaf, Hilly on Pike, get the 500 cc's of Hopium stat. That's a, a very low dose of Hopium, <laughs> to be honest. But I mean, look at this. So he immediately gets stunned. Really nice side step from Cry, and the engage comes through, and the TP comes through from the Olaf, but Hellasang's already dead. So squishy this early on into the game. And I mean, he's going to keep being squishy. He just gets more damage later on. Adam then TP's in, but it's just too little, too late. And it feels like the frustration is really starting to mount for this Fnatic roster. They're, they're trying to force plays, and here comes another one. Looking to Kryon underneath the tower. Bone Skewer's gonna land. Kryon, no flash, no way out. Shut down, goes over to Niski. So, this time around, Fnatic are able to make a play successful. They're able to shut down Kryon and get a little bit of gold into their back pocket. But look at the side lanes. Garla is pushing down bot and will get himself plates. Xiao Hu is doing exactly the same top and he will get himself more plates. And you have to sit there and ask, was well, this really worth it? Okay, you will be able to take down the mid tier one, but you're sharing this gold amongst multiple members of your team. Meanwhile, Wei and Gala are going to secure the tower bot lane. Xiao Hu secured himself three plates top. RNG overall should be pretty happy with the gold that they gained. Mithel's going to charge in. So that's two towers in the mid lane. But as you say, RNG still very much in the lead in terms of gold. 1,300 their advantage. Hidosank. Looking for Xiaohu on the top side of the map. The Krugs, one of them will be taken out, but Whippo will very happily accept this as it comes back. They're looking for this dive, but Brian has Destiny. Wei is on his way up. The wave is not going to be oh, here in time. I mean, it's a, it's a 5v3, even with the Destiny coming in. Whippo attracts Repel, able to dodge away. There's the stun card, way down towards the bottom side. Hook is going to land onto Xiaohu. And for once, <laughs> Fnatic show a degree of self-control. Yes, they certainly do. Um, they decide not to dive, which I think was the smart choice. RNG were like, 
go on. <laughs> Be my guest. We're all here. We're ready and we're waiting. Uh, RNG will not pick themselves up kills. All they ended up expending was the Twisted Fate Ultimate, which may give Fnatic a small window. But the big benefactor of all that was Gala. Yep. Remember that he was half the CS of Veen. He was very far behind in lane and he was struggling, but because he's been given so much freedom and the tower, he's now completed his first item. He's ahead of farm versus Veen. And, uh, Hang on. Everforce coming out. Ming caught in it. Wasn't intended for him. Here's Hillasang as well. There's the bone skewer. The, the Cryo has to flash away. Magnus Storm pop now. And after a moment of self control, Fnatic lose all of it once again. Gala takes the kill on Zaniski. Xiaohu chasing Hillasang down off towards the top side. Misses with the initial shuriken. So Hillasang should be able to get away with Xiaohu not having any of that. Flashes in for the kill. And, and it's another situation where RNG is just poised and ready. You know, there's two members sitting in mid lane. They're they have the teleport available on Xiao, who immediately comes through the second that Niski and Hillasang overstep. And you just have to wonder what the comms are here in Fnatic. They they keep overforcing these plays. They keep trying to find fights that they are just not able to come out on top of. The experience is starting to mount. Really, the only person that's far ahead is Whippo. He's been dominating in terms of the jungle farm. but And he has two, well, one level now over Wei, but... I don't know if that's going to be the difference maker when your mid lane is sitting at one and four and your top laner doesn't even have an item yet. I think the big thing if you are looking at this as fanatic is you have to say, let's just put our foot on the brakes. Let's just stop with I don't these think that'll ever happen. I won't, <laughs> but if you actually look at it from an objective point of view, right? We're 16 minutes in. Yes, the kills are very different, right? There's a big difference there, six different kills. But fanatic are within a thousand gold of RNG. Yeah, they are. Like, you don't have to keep forcing these Hail Mary plays to be able to get back on into the game. You can see the difference, as you say, actually even in the jungle, down towards the it's bottom side, Beam really. has a slight lead. Top lane, very advantageous for Xiaohu, but yep. you can ward for him. You can try and keep that cannon out of the fights. <laughs> I can hear the hope here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the important thing is to consider how these fights play out. So RNG's comp is very dive heavy, right? Um, they are obviously a very good team fighting team, large, by and large, because of how talented Gala is. Sure. And when you think about how their composition works, they have a lot of single target damage um, outside of the cannon ult. Yeah, the right? slicing motion for yeah, the game. But you, ooh, Ash Arrow gonna go wide. Um, that could be bad for Jack. Yeah, okay, Whip are gonna come in and save him there. But Wei is gonna do a lot of single target damage, look to try and get resets. Oh my god, Hillisang plays on the I edge. I mean, it's just He gets the kill of Insect I guess Whoa. Gala's flash in. There's the destiny. And the chase is on once again. Crying, looking for it, but couldn't quite find the gold card. Tower falls in the top side, and RNG just continually accepting every kill that Fnatic decides to give them. And Niski's looking to give them a little bit more, it seems. Flash in, flash away from Ming. They didn't want to bring Xiaohu and Wei across. Of course, no TP, but Xiaohu now alongside Wei with the Rift Herald can just charge down this tier two. Exactly. Fnatic, they claimed so much control over the top side of the map. They get themselves a tower, they get themselves good vision. And then what happens? They try to force a play in mid lane. Gala ends up getting the kill. Kryon is immediately behind him with the Twisted Fate ultimate again, showcasing his proficiency on the champion. And then RNG immediately punished by pushing through the top side of the map. And it feels like that every time Fnatic tried to make a play happen, not only does RNG stop it or turn it in their favor, they then get even more some Somewhere else on the map. RNG constantly showing us why a lot of people look at them as strong favorites for the tournament. We're going for the kickback. Kryon here, we're locking the gold card. Niski on his way as well, and Kryon doesn't really have a way to get away from this one. No flash for him, which means that he will fall. Fnatic able to find a pick on the side lane. But yeah, RNG very much one of the favorites for this tournament. And even though they came in as the third seed from the LPL, a lot of people look at them as very strong. Kill of in six on the way, but Niski. Will not look to go any further there onto Gala. Gala didn't have a huge amount of vision, but even that still wasn't enough. <laughs> he just sidestepped everything. This man is always a pleasure to watch. 164 CS, uh, highest in the game right now, with a fully completed item, working towards the second. Interestingly, Adam has actually been able to catch up in the CS department, uh, and is actually even in levels. So I'm not really sure how he did that, but, <laughs> but he did. I'll, I'll be honest, there's been so many like individual, oh, these two people are fighting now, these two people are fighting now. I don't blame you for not tracking well, the exact jung uh, top lane paths. The gold is clearly very different in yeah. the top lane. Now, the jungle has gone even more in the favor of Wei. He's been able to catch up in terms of experience. He's got a 500 gold lead, the mid lead as well, bot eight lead. It's just RNG have leads across the board. And while the lead is not so insurmountable that I would call this game done and dusted just yet, the way in which RNG is approaching this game is it's just a matter of they are 
approaching the fight smarter, they're utilizing the Twisted Fate ultimate extremely well, they're not overforcing skirmishes, and they're able to punish everyone on the map. Now, Wei is in a two versus one, but look, Ming and Gala gets a collapse first. So in the event that a fight started, they would have been in a better situation. And having a look at Pike, who's now sitting down towards the bot side of the map as well. And it's this Drake that we're really keeping our eyes on. One-to-one -one in Drake's for now. But that's likely where we're going to see the next big objective. Hillisang constantly looking for these hooks. Xiaohu will go in with the rocket belt. Hillisang will be able to dodge across the wall. But right now, RNG are the ones pushing forward. Xiaohu has the attractive hell on him. And Niski is backing uh... in a bush. He was in the shop. And the stopwatch will only stop time for a second. Niski dies. Xiaohu now on a killing spree. And uh, Whippo doing basically the exact same thing his mid laner did, except without the death. There, it's uh, RNG getting control of the bottom side river. And uh, with 20 seconds on the Cloud Drake, they should be able to secure that pretty soon. A lot of mistakes from Niski this game. We've seen him overcommit, overforce, and now losing to the shopkeeper, literally. As another fight kicks off. There's the Magnus Sword from Ming onto the back line. Hillisang trying to get away and Charter Crystal Arrow goes through the uprights and there comes the Slicing Mouse from Great Kick back by Whipper but the Rocket Belt is back up. Hillisang tries to get away. Will just about escape Destiny from crying on towards the back. Bean's gonna open up, try and get the damage down with the Ash but already RNG get another couple of kills and they work their way straight across towards the barrel. And Fnatic, they don't have their mid laner and they pick a fight 5v4. RNG are just... They don't have to do anything. Fnatic is doing it for oh, them. Oh, they're going for it again. Here we go. TP coming in from Cry and there's RNG. 4,000 HP on the Baron. Bean stepping forward. Adam there as well. There's no smite here for Fnatic, but they still want the fight. Way secures it. Adam down already. Nitsky down as well. And I can do nothing but laugh because it's so Fnatic to see. 18 kills to 6 now. RNG, Baron buff. Game well and truly in control. And after a few early missteps, RNG have totally taken this game out of Fnatic's hands. They certainly have. RNG have just responded so much better. Fnatic, they are not slowing down. Maybe they should. As Whippo looks for the fight. Here comes Xiaohu. And immediately he's turned back around on RNG. Hillisang trying to put the damage down as he can. Can't quite get the stun, but there's the death from below. And maybe they shouldn't. Way now in a 2v1 as Whippo continues to trade in. Ming on his way. A track propel will land the stun. Doesn't want to use it yet. Dragon's Rage Kick will knock Wei back. Hillisang still looking for it. Death from below isn't enough damage. The counter, the Heartbreaker from Wei goes wide. And the fight continues as Hillisang in the end falls to Ming. They're going to chase Whippo as well because Wei has stolen away. The Phantom under tow. But Nitsuki dives back in. The Slicing Mouse took to turn it back around. Garlo already unstoppable. And Wei still survives. Nitsuki down. Wei in the end will fall. Adam trying to chase onto Garlo. He'll get the shutdown there. Ming with the crash down. Being low. Adam now in a 2v1. The exhaust. Will Will take away on him, but he will still be able to get a triple kill. Hang on. He's healing up the undertow crying. Do you have a gold card to lock in? Find one in your stack deck. He'll pull it out and Adam will run away. Who has Baron now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it just crying? Yep. Wait, I think that was actually really worth for Fnatic. Yeah, just... They got a bunch of shutdowns <laughs> and and like RNG just lost four Barons. Look, that the Rebel Baron power play is only 800 gold. Asm just made so much money <laughs> off that fight. And if he had a summon, he probably could... Oh, Hillisang's back. Medic, hope your voice is ready. Oh, here we go. TP coming in. Bone Skewer goes wide. Everfrost's going to hit. Adam doesn't have the flash. Looking for the undertow. Connects with the edge of it. And Hillisang can... Oh, he messes it up. He messes up the dive across the wall. But Crying still caught out. And Crying will fall. No Baron left. That's it. All the Barons are gone. I'm sorry I ever doubted you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> let us recap, shall we, Medic? Um, RNG find themselves with a five and a half thousand gold lead. Clearly, still oh four and a half thousand gold lead. My apologies, my math is a little wonky after this game. <laughs> um, RNG have twice the number of kills and are clearly in a great position. Um, however. Hillisang Adam just doesn't got a know that. Hillisang. <laughs> Hillisang believes that money is more of a construct. Yeah. You know? <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen the copy pasta? When Fnatic are 10,000 gold ahead, Hillisang knows they're in, in a strong yeah. position and goes in. When Fnatic are even on gold, Hillisang <laughs> thinks they're in slight <laughs> holes, so he goes for the fight. When Fnatic are 10,000 gold behind, Hillisang knows he needs to make like a, a play, play, so he goes in. That's kind of been the story of this game as he looked to try and get a flank and now we'll join up with the rest of his team. But as you say, let's recap Vedius. Well, it's the items that really need yeah. to be recapped because even though Fnatic, yes, they, they removed the Baron from RNG and yes, the Dragon Soul is not really a massive point of contention. The truth is that RNG is just so Ammo. far ahead in itemization 
Ming going in with the Mega Storm, Wei is here, Crime's coming in with the Destiny as well, but Ming's already dead, Death from below is going to find that mark. They're looking to try and chase them to Gala, the Slicing Master wants to the back line is able to get enough. Whip will able to kill off Gala, pop the stopwatch, two of you, as now it's a 3v3, Niski will fall, Adam and Whip are the only two left alive for Fnatic. The chase continues. Crying, no flash. Whippo able to safeguard across the wall. Adam, no Ragnarok, and Zhao Hu can chase him down, but with the undertow, there's the slow way. We'll get the movement speed from the harrowed path. Adam cannot get away from the Spectral more, and that is enough. Adam tries to kill off Zhao Hu, but doesn't have the damage to do it. And this is exactly it. Yes, Fnatic earlier on were able to get a good number of kills, and they were able to remove the Baron from RNG, but the reality is that the item differential is still very real. And while Fnatic is able to take down the bot lane of RNG, the top side stands strong. Wrong. Wei is 8, 1, and 9. Zhao Hu has three fully completed items on this cannon, and they're able to just dismantle the backline of Fnatic. Very well played team fight from RNG, and they continue to hold on to the gold lead. Yeah, but Hill Attack. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to be able to land the Bone Skewers, the Rocket Belt propped there by Zhao Hu and RNG. Now, they would just take down a couple more towers. Three minutes on the next dragon if they want to look for it. It would be a third of the game for them. Second Cloud, Fnatic pushing out the bottom lane. There is a TP ward behind them. Way here. Oh, he's on the right side here of Whippo, who is looking for something, but now he's on the wrong side of dodge. Bone Skewer's gonna land. Whippo gonna dive. Well, waiting arm straight into Gala, who will take the kill. Crying, looking to pour a little bit more out of this one. There's the kind of instinct from Gala, and immediately he dives onto the back line, and Bean is down. It's a triple for Gala, as he wipes away the bottom side of Fnatic's map. And RNG once again punish Fnatic. They wanted to try and find a pick onto Xiaohu, catch him unawares, but RNG had already made their way back out onto the map, and we're primed and ready to make plays happen. 9, 3, and 10 is the scoreline now for Gala, and RNG are making their way into the base of Fnatic. And it feels like now RNG really are slapping Fnatic with their wallets. Fnatic continue to look for a play, but their inhibitor in the bottom lane is down, and RNG can just take whatever they want from the map. 30 seconds on the Baron, expectations are they will start to set up around that. Of course, Hillisang with the resets, Niski with the stolen ultimate could do something, but very much last chance saloon here for Fnatic. Certainly is. With the base now broken and with Baron spawning so soon. It's just a matter of time. It feels like, oh, Hillisang, he's like, oh, it's the enemy? Uh, that means a play. Bone skew up. It's not going to reach. You're correct. Because he didn't cast it. Correct. Okay. Let's take this brief moment of reprieve <laughs> to recognize RNG continue to look like heavy favorites in this group. Every single thing that Fnatic has thrown at them, RNG has immediately shut down. They've punished every single mistake. They have been performing exceptionally well individually. Cryon is showcasing why you really shouldn't give him Twisted Fate. He has been involved in 20 of their 29 kills. Um, and what's even crazier is Gar has been involved in 19 of them. <laughs> um, and yes, they have looked dominant. Right now, with the bot and hip exposed, Double TP is still up and available for Fnatic. Oh, Adam, he has been spotted by Zhao Hu. Adam. Able to dodge away from the first Shuriken, but Ragnarok will have to be popped here from Adam because he's stunned up. Able to walk away, actually, for the moment. Whippo hits a sonic wave as Crying decides with the rest of RNG that they don't want to take that fight. They're looking for Gala in the mid lane, but Gala can just back away. Niski hasn't stolen away the Destiny or anything, so it doesn't have that flank potential. And at some point soon, Fnatic are going to have to answer that bottom lane wave. Adam there now, double supers pushing in. RNG will reset and then can look to push out towards that Baron once again. And as you say, RNG very much the favorites in this group. I think PSG, after a good win against Hanwha, will be looking for that second spot. And I, as much as it sounds a little bit like an EU fanboy, I do want to give Fnatic credit because they've come out with fighting spirits in this game and have constantly tried to make plays against RNG, even though they, they probably have shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, even though they have been in the hole sometimes, but when your AD carry subs out, it's a pretty difficult thing to work around. Baron now secured for RNG. Good take by them. The reset into the Baron when they knew Adam had to deal with the super minions was a perfect bit of macro there by the LPL representatives. Yep, very clean overall and uh, very little opportunity for Fnatic to even get in for a potential steal. Now with the Baron empowered minions and a wave pushing down mid, they're looking to do more damage to the base of Fnatic. Yeah, Gala's at four items now. Infinity Edge, Kraken, Collector, Runan's very powerful, very quickly going to melt through any of these towers. Whippo trying to answer that bot lane wave, but the super minion is pushing in. Bone Skewer after Bone Skewer, not connecting here from Hillisang. 
as Fnatic will walk into darkness as Wei and Kryon are in a very strong position if they want to take this fight. Ming could dive in as well, but Hillisang knows he can be a little bit more risky as to how far he pushes up. Super Minions in the bottom lane now about to pass where the inhibitor usually would be. Hillisang lands another hook, but Ming really doesn't mind too much. Kryon has the destiny to join his team if a fight erupts in the middle lane. The inhibitor not taking too uh, inhibitor tower not taking too much damage as Kaiser not the longest range AD carry in the world will struggle to walk up there in the face of Hillisang. The wave still about five seconds away, so Fnatic actually had time to clear that bot wave and then catch this mid wave. Question is, will Gala push forward? And it's only gonna land onto Xiaohu. There's the Everfrost as well. Ming chunked out a little bit. After fire cannon from Kryon, putting some damage down onto the tower. And here goes Xiaohu with a slicing match from into Magnet Storm. And Fnatic, a valiant defender. Their base was ended in a heartbeat by RNG. Being down, RNG with a triple kill for Xiaohu. Death below finds nothing. And RNG will clean ace Fnatic in their base. Excellent dive from RNG. They'd had enough of the wave clear from Fnatic. They knew they had the gold lead. They know they have the items. And they know that they have the damage to wipe Fnatic off the map. RNG undefeated in their group, having taken down PSG and Fnatic, looking to make a statement in 